Hi, I'm Gaina Dickerson. I'm glad you're able to join me for the third video in the series of four of painting three tomatoes in coloured pencil. At the moment, for this very short section, you can see how I lay coloured pencil with tiny ellipses. But then the rest of the video is highly speeded up. The first video I did demonstrated about how I transfer my image to my art paper, followed by removing the graphite line in favour of colour. The second video showed in detail how I built up the colour in the first tomato, the one that you see at the top there. This video shows how I'm doing the second one. The majority of the video is hugely speeded up, but I think you would be very bored if you saw all the ellipses as they went down. The details of the pencil colours I used are in the information section of the YouTube video. Unfortunately, the colour on the video is not quite true um, because it is browner than it is in reality. You saw there that I used a little bit of green. And that is because if you look at a, a tomato, you can see that in actual fact, under the surface, there is often a lot of greenish markings. They become greyer when you add the red, of course. You also saw that I added yellow. Normally, uh, there I'm putting in a little bit more green. But normally, I always say, paint the dark colours first, the shadows, etc. And don't put on the light colours until later. Because if you put in the, dark, the light colours too quickly, then it acts as a sort of resist for the darker colours. But in this instance, I did it very lightly. I didn't do small ellipses so that it's just skating over the top, the surface of the, the hot press paper. And I wanted that just so that it gives a a better chance of getting a sort of orangey red for the tomato. And you can see all the colours that I'm using here. You can see that I concentrated on the area where I know there is most shadow. And that was a colder red. Now this is quite a, a warm red. And as you see me working, it looks like a patchwork quilt. Now I'm doing a little bit of the stems. So that's mauve, Faber-Castell. And I'm just putting in some of the markings. Then you can see that I go over to, there you see the very thin pe pencils, violet. Because it's not such a heavy colour as the Faber-Castell move, and therefore I can easily do more shading with it. And it's quite a hard point. I'm using mauve first because mauve is a very good colour for making your greens dark. And with coloured pencil, they are transparent or translucent so that the colours underneath affect the colours on top. So if I'm going to use mauve within my greens, then I have to make sure that I have green on top and not mauve. But it darkens the greens nicely. 
So I'm spending quite a lot of time on the detail of the stems. Unfortunately, I forgot to video that uh, top tomato, so it suddenly came out of the blue. But you can see that I have varied the greens. Here I'm using a, a chrome green, chrome oxide green, and I've used a bit of permanent green. That's a Derwent light moss green which I find very useful as a top layer to lighten some of the uh, green colours. I'm afraid that the colour here has changed rather because I was using some lights it got rather dark. I'm sorry about that because it changes the colours even more. You can see as well that I'm using a lot of pink. Pink helps to make red look red, believe it or not. And I, the paler pinks I often use near the highlights or the reflections. As I add the layers, you can see the, the depth of the colour in the tomato is getting much deeper. You can see that I'm using a light violet in the stem as well. So I'm going from the, the sepals and the stems to the tomatoes. If you look at the top edge of the tomatoes, you see it looks a, a little bit pinky. So around the edge, rather than having really distant colours, so it is showing that it is a light reflection there. You can see that I'm using some softer pencils as well. Now I'm checking the edge. I've turned the picture around so that I can see clearly the edge of my tomato. I'm using a magnifying glass, but if I turn it round and paint from underneath so that I can see my tip of my pencil and the paper at all times, then you get a nice, clean, sharp edge. Look at this bit of pencil that I'm using. It's permanent green olive. I'm doing it, it's not much left. I've glued it on the top of an old pencil because there's a lot of pigment in the end of that uh, pencil tip. So I found that if I glue them onto the end of old pencils, then I can use it right down. I've started using a little bit of sepia here as well because I want to get the contrast in with the sepals. If you put just a little bit of the background colour in as a tiny edge then you get the the bit that's on top to pop forward a bit thank you for watching